Imagine that you're a small workshop owner that specializes in rebuilding cars. The task for car A may look a little bit like this. Your best guess for the duration of the task is 16 days. You've put in your best guesses for labor and materials, and you come up with a price of $16,380 based on the job taking you 21 calendar days. Now we will analyze this in more detail. Now look at the same task in our analysis tool. You'll see we have the, the single activity, car A rebuild. You see that we have the 16 days here, the 21 calendar days expected to do it, and the uh, labor here. Now, as the owner of this garage, you look back over your records for the last few years, and you've seen that some things have gone better than expected, and others have gone wrong, causing greater or lesser values uh, for this task. So now, let us look at the duration and say, here's the 16, which was our best guess, but we have done it in 12 in the past, and sometimes things have really gone wrong, and it's taken 24 days for this task. So let's analyze what this means. If we use this tool to run a risk analysis, it will analyze this schedule 1,000 times, and each time it does it, it will randomly pick values for duration which fall within these ranges. So let's go ahead and analyze it. Here we can step through a few times and you will see the number in the remaining duration change each time we step through. And you will also see the numbers changing here. If we now go to completion and the result will pop up in front of us in just a moment. Here is the result for the costs. Now you can see that it is not a nice convenient number of what the cost is going to be. You will see that there is a distribution of costs with different likelihoods for those costs occurring. The deterministic value that we quoted for doing this job was $16,380. But only 3.5 times out of 10 or 35% of the time will we actually come in at or below that number. If we want to have much more confidence and come in at a number eight times out of 10, we should have quoted 18,845. And on this graph, you see it up here. Now, if we turn to duration, you will remember that we quoted 21 days, calendar days for doing this job. But the chances are only 3.5 out of 10 that we're going to bring it in at 21 days or less. Rather, if we want an 80% chance of coming in on time or better, we should have quoted 27 days in the first place. At first, these results seem surprising when you consider how confident we were with a simple schedule without any uncertainty in it. But things get even more complicated as complexity increases because we end up with some somewhat counterintuitive results. Let's look at this case here now. Let's assume that we are going to rebuild two cars, exactly the, exactly the same, but 
but this time linked in sequence. Now, intuitively, we would expect to quote for these two cars twice the price of a single car, and instead of 21 days, we would expect to quote 42 days. This isn't quite the result that we're going to get this time. So let's analyze it and see where we end up. We'll run a risk analysis. We will analyze it for a thousand iterations and we'll run to completion. And the result should show up right now. Here we are. Here's the result for duration. And look what's happening. We get only a 23% chance of meeting the time that we quoted. And if we had want to have an 80% chance of meeting the time we quoted or better, we should have quoted 51 days. Similarly, let's look at cost. We quoted twice the one car price, which was 32,760, but we only have a 23% chance of bringing it in on that price or better. If we want to get an 80% chance, we should have quoted a number of $36,755. Why is this? Well, if we go back and look at our bar chart again, we can see that every time we have a lengthening of the duration of car A, this becomes the starting point for car B. So even if we have a shorter duration on car B, say less than 16 days, it doesn't do us any good because we're starting from the completion of the other car. So it is perhaps a surprising result, but it is logical when you think about it. Let us assume that we can rent another garage and we can do these same two cars side by side. This would look what it's like. But also let us assume that we cannot get paid for these until we deliver both cars. Now we have still got 16 days for each one. We've got exactly the same ranges and we've got the exact same costs for each one. Let's run our analysis and see what happens this time. running through a thousand times and here is the cost profile. The cost we quoted was 32,760 uh, and if we want an 80% chance of meeting it we should have quoted 36,755. That is not very different from when we did them in sequence. But now, look at the duration. We quoted for two cars side by side, 21 calendar days. Our chance of making this is down at 12%. That has really dropped. And if we want an 80% chance of doing them in the time we quote, then we should have quoted 28 days. When you think about this, again, there is a reason for it. 
each time we get longer or shorter on the first one, if we gain time on this one, it won't do us any good on the second one because we just have to wait for the other car to be finished so we could have really good luck and finish one of these quite early, all to no avail because the other one may have bad luck with it and be longer than anticipated. So we've got a, a multiplying effect between these two cars and the situation is even worse as far as our likelihood of completion on time is concerned than doing them in sequence and worse than doing one. <laughs>